honesty pays and transparency always helps. We have been since the beginning uh, extremely honest on, on, on the situation in which we were with everybody. Good morning, uh, Federico. Thank you for being with us today. Good morning. My pleasure. Thank you. Thank you for asking us to, to be here. What is your, your feedback with your partners and investors and maybe one or two iconic openings that you could make during, uh, during the last couple of months? You have whoever is financing it, whoever is owning it, and whoever is operating it. Okay? So it's the, three, it's, it's the three parties. Okay. So if that flexibility is not reached, then obviously that, that project falls apart. Okay? But, but I, I think what we are seeing, however, is uh, in, 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 many, in many of the projects, and I have to say that last year, Last year, we had a phenomenal year. We signed uh, more than 40 hotels. Uh, it's one of the best years we have had. Uh, and, and if you look to, to some of the, of, the, of the signings and of the openings or refurnishments that we, that we have done, um, we are opening now a hotel, a Ryzen Collection, uh, that is doing very well. We are opening now one, one in, um, in Madrid. Uh, um, we, did, we, did, we signed one and we opened one in Lyon. Uh, we are opening right now. Yesterday we had the opening of our Ryzen collection in, in Shanghai, the first Ryzen collection in, in China. So all those projects have these kind of, com of combinations, you know. I mean, it's a good business project, but actually the three parties have had to sit down and say, okay, how do we manage this, okay? If we are all into the same background or in the same framework that the project was based, okay, 12 months ago, possibly the hotel will not open. now. I think, as you say, it's very important to look, and this is what I try to tell all, all the partners, you know, I mean, I, I think what is critical in any of these projects is that all the parties look to the next 15, 20 years. I may need some help, okay, because maybe I had committed to get something or pay something during this year. Uh, we cannot pay it because there is no, there is no business, uh, but can we find, you know, an equilibrium between the three and that everybody or eventually they can recover the value of the investment in the next 15, 20 years. So I think, Whenever there is flexibility, I think, uh, uh, I, I think, and when the business case is properly done, and, and and you see all the things that we can bring to the party or the financing or the owner, I, I think we can we can find we can find um, uh, a good way. Can you share with us a little bit of feedback about uh, what are the discrepancy between uh, countries or region? Because uh, often we we see where we are in our country, mm -hmm. but uh, the overall picture is not um, uh, always the same uh, if we compare uh, US, Asia, Europe, and even inside, the, inside Europe is different. So what is the feedback from, from uh, the Radisson network? Yes, well, I, I think, uh, I mean, as you have mentioned, everything changes and changes faster than we ever thought they would change, okay? And I think uh, even the evolution of the different regions uh, has been very different. I mean, it's like, it looks like already 2020 is very far away, even if there's only one month, okay? And it's possible because we were all looking towards 21, okay? Very, very, very quick. But, but I would say, if you look through regions, I, I think, and you summarize more or less 2020, uh, definitely Europe is, is the continent that, sa that has suffered the most, uh, okay? I think it's like uh, nearly every month in and month out, uh, Europe has, has done well below any other region of the world. Uh, I think after Europe, we have had uh, the, Amer uh, the US, uh, but, but I, actually I think the US has, has performed much, much better than many, many of the countries in Europe. Uh, and then you have China, I mean, as you know, that recovered very, very quickly and is, is doing very well. And the rest of Asia that is in between, I would say, Europe and, and, uh, and, and the US. You know? that, that's, that's more or less the overall picture. Because Mostly the issue is that we are in a mobility crisis. It's because we cannot move that the, the industry is hurt uh, that hard. Uh, when mobility will be back, and we saw it some time to time uh, during last year when, when the, the lockdown uh, were open together for people to move, that the decompression of the demand is quite quick. D different to the previous crisis, th this is truly a confidence crisis. It's, 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 it's a confidence crisis in the sense that I'm not confident uh, when, when I'm not sure that I will get sick or not. Second, if I get sick, I don't know if I will have a place in the hospital or not. And third, I don't know if, if having a place in the hospital, if I will survive or not. So it's like, 
is three levels of uncertainty, if you wish, that are that are that are uh, one on top of the other one. So I think the moment the uncertainties uh, change, uh, any of these three levels, because I, I think uh, you are right that this is uh, as a result of that there is less mobility. But I think unfortunately, so far we have not been able to act as a society at the different levels. I think hospitality is uh, is is one of the basics of uh, I would say of human activity, you know, it's, it's not only for tourists, but for business. Um, and, and there is so much we are missing. Do you believe there is a need of consolidation in the future uh, or uh, probably uh, what we saw in the last five years that were quite a big movement in terms of consolidation uh, for our industry uh, will, not, uh, will not last or will not be the right strategy? What, what is your opinion on that? I, I think when, when we look to the business plan and when we formulate our plan for the next five years, what, what we think is, uh, what, what is the biggest, what is the largest business opportunities we have with the assets we have? I mean, we have the brands, we have the teams, we are putting in place new systems, we are putting in place uh, all the reformulation of the brands. With all these investments, uh, what is the best way to grow? And I think when we look at that, and then obviously what is the capital that you need to deploy for that growth, okay? So, so what we see is, in the case of Radisson, there is a huge opportunity still to grow in a significant way, taking over either hotels that are in the market, uh, independent, or hotels that are under other flags, or new hotels that are happening. Did you have changed your approach to the business? Because everyone is questioning, uh, would we have the same uh, corporate uh, demand um, in terms of travelers? Uh, would people uh, change the way they consume uh, services and, and um, uh, I mean, hospitality services in general? It has not changed the core of the strategy. Okay, I, I think when we did the five years plan, and, and we looked to the 25 key initiatives behind the five years plan about repositioning of assets, uh, renovating the new brand segmentation, uh, the pricing and revenue management tools, the new loyalty, the new web. All those tools that were a key element of the investments and of the strategy are the same. Okay. When you look to the product and services we were offering, actually what has done is accelerate many of the things we had. We had we had in our in our digital plan, uh, we had the inclusion of uh, online online check-in, online check-out, self-check-in, self-check-out, uh, WhatsApp communication system, a communication system much more integrated. And that was planned, let's say, for the next three years. Okay, I, I think what, what this situation has, has, has made is that we have tried to accelerate to have in 12 months what we were planning to have in three years. Why? It's because that uh, dematerialization of, of the operations needs to happen. You know, obviously, when you have a, a managed property or you have more than 1,000 hotels in the world, you need to secure, and we have deployed and defined always very clear standards of operations. But now, the experience cannot have only one formulation. Think of the breakfast. When uh, we used to have a buffet, and then when the crisis came, we said, well, we will move to individual breakfast. Well, now, you need to have individual breakfast, buffet, kitchen, chef, because nearly any consumer is coming with a different set of, 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 of priorities or with a different mindset. If you if you only offer individual breakfast, some of them will say, where is my buffet? When I come to the hotel is when I have the buffet. So you need to kind of be able, and that's what we are trying to do, is to try to integrate in your operational model different executions of different uh, activities and, and the check-in experience, the food experience, the in-room experience, uh, in, in such a way that uh, you can still get to your satisfaction levels. That you, and that, that means more cost. So you need to find at the same time, how can you optimize other sides of the, of the hotel to make sure that the GOPs would be still at the level that we want them to be. Do you believe we still have room to improve uh, this um, this gain in, in productivity while keeping and enhancing the the experience? The, the only point is is going to be very segmented. Okay, I, I think when you look to the population, the the level of adoption of the new technologies is very different, and, and that's why I'm saying that we need to keep it still nearly all the systems in parallel. It's like personally myself when I go to a hotel. I like the live check-in. I like it. I mean, I like to sense uh, the person that I have in front of me. I, I like to sense it. And I personally like to do the checkout 
uh, over there also to check that everything is fine. That's not my wife doesn't do like that. She would prefer to have the checkout, not waste time in the checkout and say, you know what, they will send me the bill. And if I don't like the bill, we will not pay or we will create an issue. But if I go to my kids, they would say, why do you wait in the check-in? I did the check-in already with my phone. So, so I think we need to enable the, all the consumers uh, and the different segments at the different levels of adoption of technology while still be respectful and allow everybody to do. It's not the same for me, and maybe I'm, I'm older than, than the average, but it's not the same a check-in in a plane than a check-in in a hotel, okay? And then, then the same way I do a check-in very happy in a machine when I go to the plane, Okay, uh, I, I personally like the human contact when I do it in a hotel. But again, I, I think the difference is we need to integrate in our hotel operations today all those things, and at the same time, find the ways in which the hotel does not suffer in profitability. Okay, and that means investments from a, our reservation system in our PMSs of solutions that enable those actions to happen efficiently. Federico, you, you are one of the leaders uh, of our industry. Uh, you have a very long experience. I won't mention all the great companies you, you went through, but they, they are all leading companies in the industry. This time was some very anxious in a way, but also very interesting uh, when you manage people um, and, and, and when you are a manager. Did you learn something about yourself uh, during this very specific period? Uh, the, the, the way uh, you have to make difficult choice, the way you have to think about the vision. Um, was it special? Did you learn something uh, personally? Honesty pays and transparency always helps. So I think, I think as, as you have said, we have, uh, we have been since the beginning uh, extremely honest on, on on the situation in which we were with everybody, okay, and uh, everybody knew that it was painful um, uh, in different in different levels at different uh, levels. Everybody has known what are the different sacrifices and the efforts the company has done at all levels. Uh, but I, I think we have done it in a way that has been very transparent and, as I said, with with a, a lot of honesty. Okay, not not trying to create a corporate speech that would at the end alienate people. You know. So, so I think, uh, I mean, we, we, are, we are more than 100,000 people. Uh, some of them have been sick. Uh, some of them, unfortunately, pass away. Uh, some of them, or many of them, uh, got uh, significant uh, salary cuts uh, or have been or are still in furloughs. And, and what we have tried to be is, as I, I said, as honest as possible, as coherent as possible. And, and I would say it's something that uh, is not in the leadership um, in the leadership manuals, because it's not uh, it's not properly phrased, but but we, we we have been trying, and I think it works, to be good persons. Federico, the, the 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 very difficult exercise, the crystal ball one, <laughs> you have to 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 share with us uh, every morning when you woke up and shave in front of the of the glass. Um, when do you believe uh, the, the the business will be back somehow to uh, to normal? I think uh, how it looks is going to be completely linked to vaccination. Okay, I mean, I, I think the only country in the world that has succeeded without vaccination is Australia. Uh, I mean, as you could see this weekend, okay, the tennis tournament with people around, uh, but it's, it's Australia. So I think it's going to be completely linked to vaccination. And then when you look to those, to those situations, it looks more like towards the end of Q2, of quarter two. So it's more about, we are talking about more April, May, June. Okay, where uh, we may have uh, a level of vaccination, okay, that is uh, that is reasonable. Uh, it will depend a lot by country, uh, and and I think that is uh, that is I think is the key milestone that keeps us hoping that then the second part of the year will go back to let's say uh, if not to 19, but you know to a reasonable level where we can start uh, you know seeing some cash. Let's say cash flows positive, you know, uh, but and I, and I think that's what, what I think the crisis has also t uh, uh, taught us is that is uh, be beyond uh, beyond the year and and the two years and the five years is now the month and the quarter. So I think Q1 is gone. Okay, it's like uh, uh, now everybody is looking into 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 Q2, and as I said, vaccination seems to indicate that it's more towards the end of Q2. Okay, where people will may have again the confidence to say, okay, I, I have the vaccination, I can again travel, 
Uh, but I said, I think, I think it's also critical that in, in parallel, the governments keep, keep working on hospitals and, 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 and places in case anything or anything comes again in the future, people, people recover quick the, the confidence. Okay, thank you. Thank you very much. Thank you very much to you all. Thank you.